Gates that have held Allied soldiers prisoner, in some cases for as long as five years, are opened in Stalag 11B. Look closely, you may recognize someone you know. Five years and now it's over. British Desert Rats of the 7th Armoured Division cut through to Fallingbostel in Westphalia to open the doors of this Stalag. A touching goodbye to Hitler and out of the barbed wire cage to freedom. It's the same story at Stalag 357, also at Fallingbostel and also opened up by the Desert Rats. The Germans have now decided to leave all Allied prisoners behind in camps in the path of the advancing armies. For the German camp commandant, the tables have been well and truly turned. At Offlag 79 in Brunswick, biggest camp in Germany for officer prisoners, 2,200 British and Empire officers were freed by the 30th Division of General Simpson's American 9th Army. German General Karl Weit, commander of the Brunswick garrison, is among the Allied bag of prisoners. He seems proud of being a Nazi even now. On the lookout for known Nazis, the Allies check up on civilians in Schweinfurt. What a farce it would be if a bloke turned up with a little moustache and a paper hanger's bucket. You'll never know. The Hitler Youth, Europe's big problem for the future, line up for identification. Besides a good catch of prisoners, Schweinfurt yielded up yet another prize. This much-bombed town was the centre of Germany's ball-bearing industry. Vital components for aircraft, submarines, tanks, and everything on wheels. The German army has had its last ball-bearing from Schweinfurt. Buried treasure, another hall, more precious if not more useful, was found hidden in a salt mine at Merkens. A hundred tons of Germany's gold reserve were discovered here, a veritable King Solomon's mines. Also found were priceless art treasures, stolen by the Germans from galleries such as the Paris Louvre. But Paris has not forgotten treachery, as an inset into our story shows. Press pictures in back issues of a French paper show French traitors in Nazi uniform. The camera indicts the Vichy collaborators Lafont and Bonny, and shows Allied prisoners being ill-treated at their orders by men and women hired by the French Gestapo chiefs to demonstrate against Allied servicemen for propaganda purposes. In the background, Nazi rank and filers enjoy the spectacle. A French cameraman risked his life to take these pictures during the German occupation. They were used in evidence at the trial of Lafont and Bonny. They paid the price of treachery before an FFI firing squad. All the way from Paris to Berlin, the cleaning up process is on. German civilians hand over all the paraphernalia of war. It's an Allied order. The fitting end to pictures of the writing off of Germany is a reminder, spoken at Bristol, that another big job is still on hand. We have the Japanese to finish. We have to stand absolutely with our great American uh, ally uh, in uh, paying off at the other end of the world uh, debts as heavy as ever were inflicted on her. And uh, I shall have to ask you, uh, or whoever stands in my place, uh, and whoever it be, I shall support him. We shall have to ask you, whatever the matter, however the matter may go, we shall have to ask you for uh, a new, a new le leap forward, a new lift of soul and body, in order that this second heavy war from which we have suffered so much insult and injury, the war against Japan shall also be brought uh, without undue delay to a conclusion uh, altogether free from any uh, doubt. <laughs>